Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Monday. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, Chad and Melissa this weekend. Incredible hearts, uh, incredible passion for serving God, for serving his people, serving the church. They have sacrificed greatly and I really greatly appreciate them being here this weekend. So we are continuing through the book of Psalms. And so it's Psalm, uh, but uh, we're in Psalm 35. So we'll call it Psalms. Uh, and we are going to be looking at the whole chapter. So um, hopefully you're ready. Got your Bibles open as we continue on in this journey. So this is called, you know, simply titled a Psalm of David. Now, what's interesting about this is this is called an imprecatory Psalm an imprecatory psalm, which in strong terms asks God to defeat and destroy the enemies of his people. So you're going to get a chance to see the rawness and the realness and the frustration, you know, of reading or talking to God. And so these imprecatory psalms, you know, become more intense as the book goes along. So Psalm 7, is uh, perhaps the mildest imprecatory psalm. Uh, then you got 30, and then you got Psalm 109. So, I mean, just a big, big deal, you know, along those lines. So here we go. You know, let's jump in. Psalm of David, O Lord, oppose those who oppose me. Fight those who fight against me. Put on your armor and take up your shield. Prepare for battle and come to my aid. Lift up your spear and javelin against those who pursue me. Let me hear you say, I will give you victory. So I love that uh, David just kind of comes out of the gate swinging. And in the same way, do you understand that there, we're also, you know, at war, but our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's against the principalities, you know, of this world, you know, against the evils, against uh, Satan and his dominions. And so we are supposed to put on the armor. I love that it says, fight those who put on your armor. So let's put on the armor of God, Ephesians 6, in order to fight the battles that need to be waged. And so he pleads to God for, for defense. Then we jump to verse 4. Bring shame and disgrace on those trying to kill me. I love how real this is. Turn them back and humiliate those who want to harm me. Blow them away like chaff in the wind, a wind sent by the angel of the Lord. Make their path dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. I did them no wrong, but they laid a trap for me. I did them no wrong, but they dug a pit to catch me. So let sudden ruin come upon them. Let them be caught in the trap that they set for me. Let them be destroyed in the pit that they dug for me. So he prays for the destruction, you know, of his enemies, and we need to be praying, you know, for the spirit against the spiritual uh, adversaries against us as well. And so we can pray, God, may evil not win. May you uh, reign supreme. May you bring your judgment. May you, you know, allow us uh, to find victory in your name. Let's just make sure that you and I are holy and righteous before God. And then it jumps down to verse nine. Then I will rejoice in the Lord. I'll be glad because he rescues me. Uh, with every bone in my body, I will praise him. Lord, who can compare with you? Who else rescues the helpless from the strong? Who else protects the helpless and poor from those who rob them? And so talk about praise. He's already anticipating and trusting that God will deliver. Now, when will God deliver? How God will deliver? Don't know. If you look at David's life, there was much of his life, especially early on, that he was running for his life. And how often, I wonder, he was praying, God, how much longer should this go on? God, I didn't ask for this. I didn't look for this. I'm actually trying to follow you. And yet evil is right at my doorstep. I feel like um, since I've followed you, since I've been anointed as king, I've had more hardship and pain in my life. And could it be that it's actually through the hardship and pain that God refines us the most? And so we can cry out. We can say, God, you do what only you can do. You avenge, you lead, you guide. But I'm going to entrust my spirit and trust myself on this day and still trust myself to you. Verse 11, malicious witnesses testify against me. They accuse me of crimes I know nothing about. They repay me evil for good. I am sick with despair. Yet when will they when they were ill, I grieve for them. So all of a sudden, David is reminding how much he previously cared for these people who are now his enemies. Have you been there? Have you been in a situation where you were aligned with someone in relationship or in purpose or in vision or at work or in the neighborhood, and then all of a sudden it went south? Now, I've had that. You've seen some of that on social media going, wait a minute, we've been together for a long time and this is, this is how you're going to respond. This is how you're going to lead. And so you kind of remember, he goes back and kind of laments about the care that he actually took in those who are now his enemies. And he says, uh, yet when they were ill, I grieved for them. 
I denied myself by fasting for them. I was for them. But my prayers returned unanswered. I was sad as though they were my friends. Uh, I was sad as though they were my friends or family as if I were grieving for my own mother. But they are glad now that I am in trouble. So then he says, but look how they betrayed me. They gleefully joined together against me. I am attacked by people I don't even know. They slander me constantly. They mock me and call me names. They snarl at me. How long? And then he goes into this, this uh, promise of prayer, this prayed promise of deliverance. How long, O Lord, will you look on and do nothing? Rescue me from their fierce attacks. Protect me from these lions. Then I will thank you in front of the great assembly. I will praise you before all the people. Don't let my treacherous enemies rejoice over my defeat. Don't let those who hate me without cause gloat over my sorrow. Sorrow. They don't talk of peace. They plot against innocent people mind who mind their own business. They shout, aha, aha, with their own eyes. With our own eyes, we saw him do it. And so they're making these false accusations. You ever been falsely accused? You ever had people you know, um, do things that were absolutely not true? Uh, and, and, and people you used to care about, and now they're actually wishing you harm, wishing you evil. Um, as, as we jump into verse 23, uh, uh, verse 20, oh Lord, you know all about this. Do not say silent, do not abandon me now, oh Lord. Wake up, rise to my defense, take up my case, my God and my Lord. Declare me not guilty, oh Lord, my God, for you give justice. Don't let my enemies laugh about me in my troubles. Don't let them say, look, we got what we wanted. Now we will eat him alive. May those who rejoice in my troubles be humiliated and disgraced. May those who triumph over me be covered with shame and dishonor. But give great joy to those who come to my defense. Let them continually say, great is the Lord who delights in blessing a servant with peace. And so he comes to this point where he's just like, God, don't let them win. Don't let them triumph over, you know, especially when they have done absolutely evil. Now I'm not talking about normal uh, when, when I know there's a part that I'm at blame, you know, where we just have fights and, and, and issues with one another, look to see how this is played out. And then I love how he ends the Psalm. Then I will proclaim your justice and I will praise you all day long. So he's anticipating God, you're going to do what only you can do. You're the righteous judge. You see clearly, you know, the motivations of the heart, you know, um, uh, behind the veil, you know, that we can do one thing and say, and believe something else differently, but you God. You, God, are worthy to be praised. And so as we close today, here's my challenge. My challenge and encouragement is use this psalm. It's okay to cry out. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay um, uh, to pray, you know, against the things, you know, that are hurting and destroying us, especially when we know that we have, are innocent, again, innocent before God, not more innocent than another person. Big distinction. Like, well, you've done more than a wrong that I've done. I know I've done a wrong, but you've done a wrong. David's like, no, no, no. There is nothing I have done to these people, and they are trying to destroy me. And God, I want to bring you praise. And so what an opportunity for us to bring God praise uh, as we go through these things. And you noticed uh, where David didn't go? He didn't go to social media. He didn't have it. But you also know he didn't go to the people. He went right to God. He wrote these prayers down to God. And says, I'm going to bring my frustration. I'm going to bring my pain, my suffering, uh, your judgment. I'm going to bring it to you. And so on this day, if you're facing something, uh, someone that is just, you know, not aligned to the will or direction of God, and you know this is a spiritual attack, you know that you're being falsely accused, I pray that you would pray these kinds of prayers and entrust ourselves to God. And just say, God, I'm going to entrust you with all this. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for today. We love you. We trust you. We give our lives to you. And Father, all of us are attacked at different points by the, the enemy. And help us to not see people, uh, Father, for you died for everyone. But to know that behind the attitude, behind the action, there is an enemy that it's at work. Help us to put on the spiritual armor of God. And Father, help us to defeat the enemy. The enemy that is unseen. The enemy that doesn't present himself. And Father, we just pray that you would lead, guide, and direct our steps. Thank you for psalms like this that we know that we can just cry out whatever our perspective may be, that we can just cry it out to you and help us to be a people that comes to you for wisdom, for guidance, and to cry out to you for justice and for, and for judgment. Father, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, have a great rest of your day and uh, I will see you again tomorrow as we jump in to Psalm chapter, what are we going to be in tomorrow? 36. Have a great day, guys.